So let's talk about this optimization problem. The question is, which points on the graph of y equals 4 minus x squared are closest to the point 0, 2? Now, let's talk about, first of all, this is going to be a calculator interactive question, and I can promise you. So let's get just a general idea here of what we're looking at. So we're trying to compare points on this graph to the point 0, 2. Now, 4 minus x squared. Hopefully, you know... This has a y-intercept of 4, it is a downward-facing parabola, and it crosses the x-axis at positive 2 and negative 2. Now, how do I know those things? Well, first of all, it's because I've been doing this stuff for forever. Uh, but second of all, the y-intercepts of a parabola are very easy to determine. It's always the constant that's just by itself. 4 is by itself, so that's a y-intercept of 4. Um, this is factorable. If I were to factor it or if I was to set it equal to 0 and solve, I would get the positive and negative 2. So that's how I know those are the x-intercepts. So we're trying to figure out which points are the closest to that point 0, 2. So you may think, well, it's the point that's directly horizontal from it. That may be true. It may not be true. It, it's probably more likely a point that's kind of diagonal. When you think, doesn't that kind of make a little bit more sense as far as minimizing a, dis, a distance here? So this is an optimization problem, and I know that because the question is closest. Okay, closest, minimum, maximum, um, things like that. Words like that should make you think, I'm trying to optimize. And anytime you're trying to optimize, you're going to have to take the derivative of something. Optimization means that you are trying to get the most or the least out of a certain situation. Okay, so we looked at a problem. I can't even remember what the other example we did before Christmas was. Uh, we wanted the maximum volume here uh, with a particular surface area. Here we're trying to find the smallest distance. Um, Okay, so that means we're going to have to take the derivative of something, but I don't know what that something is yet. Um, closest probably means that we're talking about a distance, right? We're talking about a distance. So let's go back to our distance formula. Mm-hmm. Distance is, anybody remember? Square root of x minus x squared plus y minus y squared. Remember, it's kind of a derivation of the Pythagorean theorem. I think I showed you guys that back in math one. Yeah, I think I did. Back in math one. Yeah, it's a little while ago. Okay, but that's your distance formula. So this is what we are going to try and maximize, but we need to plug in some specifics first because there are some things that don't change and there are some things that do change, and obviously we have way too many, too many variables right here to take the derivative with respect to one of them, right? We have two x's and we have two y's. We can't take the derivative yet. Okay, so let's look in the context of our problem over here. Uh, what does not change? Well, first of all, what, what are we trying to find the distance of? Which part of my picture here? Using colors. It's purple. Okay, the purple part. Okay, the purple part, the distance right here. Okay, this distance right here, whatever, wherever it may be, but we're trying to, um, that's what we're trying to uh, minimize. Okay, so that distance is the red part. So which part of those red segments does not change. Which part do those both have in common? If I drew another point down here, the 0, 2 does not change. Okay, the 0, 2 does not change. That means that we can go ahead and plug that in. Okay, we can go ahead and plug that into the distance formula here. Um, so it doesn't matter whether it's the sub 2 or the sub 1. Uh, I'm going to make it the sub 1. Okay, so uh, x minus 0. Okay, and I'm going to drop the sub 2 because I really don't need that anymore. 
and the y1 is 2. Now, I left a blank there for a second where the y sub 2 was. And the reason why is because I've got to have this all in terms of one variable. Okay, I can't have x and y and then take the derivative. So, how about we use our function right here and substitute the 4 minus x squared for the y. Wouldn't that make sense? No, and that's why I'm showing you this example. Okay, so let's go ahead and simplify and then we'll look at taking the derivative. Well, x minus 0 is just x, so we got x squared. I'm going to drop the parentheses because I don't need them anymore. Um, inside that second set of parentheses, we've got 4 minus 2 is 2, so 2 minus x squared squared. I'm going to go ahead and simplify it because I know I'm going to have to take the derivative. I already have a square root involved in this whole problem. I really don't want to have to deal with a chain rule or anything like that. I'm already going to have one chain rule. I don't want to have to deal with the second one. Okay, so let's keep going with the simplifying here. Please, please, please do not say that that is equivalent to 4 minus x to the fourth. You all know better than that. you got to foil it. That's 2 minus x squared times 2 minus x squared. So that would be um, 4 minus 4x squared plus x to the fourth. We can combine some like terms here. So we have x to the fourth minus 3x squared plus 4. Okay, so we finally have our equation simplified. Now we can take the derivative. We haven't even gotten to the calculus part of it yet. Now we can take the derivative. Okay, so the derivative of the distance, that can be rewritten as what? x to the fourth minus 3x squared plus 4 to the 1 half. <coughs> So when we take the derivative, we bring down the exponent. We keep the inside the same. Subtract 1 from the exponent. And then multiply by the derivative of the inside. Okay, now I'm going to do just a little bit to clean this up. That negative exponent is going to move that to the denominator. So we have 4x cubed minus 6x in the numerator and 2 times x to the fourth minus 3x squared plus 4 to the 1 half in the denominator. I can actually do one more thing to simplify. What is that? Hmm? Make it a square root. Well, we can make it a square root, but what were y'all saying? Factor out. We can, we can simplify that too with the numerator because both terms in the numerator have a factor of 2 or are divisible by 2, so we can make life a little bit easier. And if you really want to, you can write that as a square root instead of the one-half power. It really doesn't matter. Now, this is our derivative. We're trying to optimize, so that means we want the minimum distance. So what do we do once we take the derivative and we're trying to find the minimum? We set it equal to zero. Okay, we set it equal to zero. Well, it's a fraction. What's the only way a fraction is going to equal zero? If the numerator equals zero. So really... Yeah, this derivative is kind of complex, but all we really have to worry about is that numerator equal to zero. Because remember, we're, yes, we have critical points where the denominator equals zero, but usually those end up being um, 
they're not maximums and minimums. They're either uh, undefined places in the function or they're uh, changes on concavity. They're not really uh, minimums or maximums. So all we have to worry about is this. Um, if we're solving this, factor out an x. So we've got x equals 0. We have 2x minus 3 is equal to 0. Huh? Oh, 2x squared. Thank you. 2x squared minus 3 is equal to 0. So 2x squared is equal to 3. x squared is equal to 3 halves. Take the square root. Don't forget the plus or minus. So we have the plus or minus square root of 3 over 2. So we have three potential places where the distance is a minimum. Let's check really quickly um, on a number line. So we're testing values in the derivative. The square root of 1.5 is obviously less than 1, right? Square root of 3 over 2. Let's double check that. Square root 3 over 2. No, it's greater than 1. My bad. 1.2. Okay, so that means I'm going to test like negative 2, negative 1, 1, and 2. In the derivative, okay, when I test those in the derivative, let's see here, a negative number cubed is still a negative number, uh, what would that be, 8, so that's negative 16 plus 6, so that's still negative on top, and the square root on the bottom is going to be a positive, so that's going to be negative right here, negative 1. We've got negative 2 plus 3, that's going to be positive. So this is positive. What are you looking for? I'm just looking for positive and negative because I want to see which one of these are minimums. Uh, we plug in 1 into the derivative. We've got um, 2 minus 3, so that's negative. The bottom is going to be positive, so that's a negative, and then when we plug in 2, we're going to end up with a positive. So, where the derivative changes from negative to positive, that creates a minimum. So we've got minimums at our square root answers here, not in 0. 0 would be a maximum. 0 would be the maximum uh, distance. And it's like that because you're defining it. Okay, so, uh, yes, those are the x values, but I wanted to know what points, so we need to plug those into the original 4 minus x squared to find their y values. So, uh, 4 minus, well, when you square square root, that cancels. So 8 over 2 minus 3 over 2 is 5 over 2. Both of those are going to have a y value of 5 over 2. So your points are the plus or minus square root of 3 over 2, 5 halves.